All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Sam Hay to level up your mindset and help you win in poker and in life. But right, how much luck or skill is there really in a game of poker? And what's the difference between gambling and investing? And are some people really just luckier than others? You know, I think these are really great questions because they pose some really interesting challenges that I've also experienced personally as a poker player such as trying to explain whether my poker winnings were due to my skill or whether it was just blind luck. So in today's video, I want to share my thoughts on the relationship between luck and skill and talk about how you can analyse your results and also explain how it's even indeed possible to improve your luck. And no, I'm not talking about buying a lucky horseshoe or a rabbit's foot. As always, please remember to check out my poker blog at onechipcall.com where I discuss hand histories and offer my thoughts on how I navigate cash games in London. Right, let's look at what luck and skill really is. Luck can be thought of as risk. It's random, unpredictable and out of your control. But your luck, just like risk, can be managed. And skill is exactly your ability to be able to manage that luck to your favour. But what does managing your luck really mean? So skillful poker players know how to avoid bad luck and position themselves to let good luck happen to them through the decisions that they make on the poker table. Now that's why these guys always seem so lucky to be able to cool their opponents while avoid being cooled themselves. Now unskilled poker players often put themselves in bad spots and put their money in situations where the odds are often, are often stacked against them. And that's why these guys may always complain to themselves saying that they feel like they're the most unlucky poker players in the whole world. Things that happen outside of your control is luck, like what hole cards you get dealt at the start of the hand. But things that happen within your control because of the decisions that you make is your skill, like choosing which starting hands to play, when to fold, when to call, and when to raise. The line between luck and skill is often blurred and you need to be careful to not let your ego redraw this line to convince yourself that every time you win is always because of your superior decision making skills and that the only reason you ever lose is because of bad luck or that it's never your fault or that you played badly. You know, this should go as no surprise that this is a losing mindset because if you can't do an honest assessment of your performance and accept responsibility for your mistakes, then how will you ever improve as a player? Your ego is actually the first thing that you need to address before you can even do an honest assessment of your results. As a poker player myself, whenever we discuss hand histories, we all wanna know whether or not we played the hand well, but just got unlucky to lose the hand. Or in fact, we played the hand badly, we just got lucky to win the hand. Now, because of luck, it can be really difficult to determine whether or not we were playing well or we we're just running well. You know, your results won't validate whether or not you did the right or wrong things for any given hand. So what I try to do when I'm, when I'm trying to figure out whether or not I played a hand skillfully is I only focus on the things that are within my control, i.e. the decisions that I make on the poker table. After playing big pots on my train home, I'd ask myself honestly if I would have played the hand in the exact same way if I were to play it a thousand times over. I'd write notes and I'd really dissect the hand to criticise the way the hand played out. I'd also discuss the big hands I play with other top pros to see if they agree with the decisions I made to validate my thinking. The happier I am with my decisions, the more confident I'll be that I play well due to my skill and that's regardless of what the outcome is. Now, don't forget, it's also possible to play well and get lucky at the same time. So remember to recognise this so that you don't give yourself too much credit whenever things go your way. Now, instead of looking at any given hand, if we look at a longer period of time, then the best or clearest indication that your, your winnings are due to uh, your skill and not luck is having a long-term trend of consistent results. Now this does beg the question of what does long term or what does consistent really mean? So for live poker play, uh, you need to look at about a thousand hours of play, targeting a win rate of about five to 10 big blinds per hour. 
Now playing 40 hour weeks as a professional player, this would equate to around six months of play. Now for online, this will be different. You want to be looking at a sample size of about 200,000 hands, targeting a win rate of about three to five big blinds per hour. Poker professionals who can play four tables of six max zoom or fast forward poker for eight hours, Monday to Friday, 200,000 hands can be easily reached within about a month. But don't take these figures as gospel because I am just offering my opinion. However, I do think that these figures will give you a great indication of your poker ability. Look, luck cannot stand consistency. So if you're a consistent winner over a long period of time, then trust me, you are definitely responsible for your results and it's not just luck. Why does putting your money into a business just feel a lot more safer than putting your money on a roulette table, which is just generally considered as a lot more risky? I mean, both involve putting your capital at risk. I mean, you could lose your money on a roulette table, just like how you could lose your money if the business goes bankrupt. You see, the thing is, we don't really consider businesses as a gamble because we expect them to generate long-term profits. You know, there's a lot of work that goes into the research, the planning uh, and the analysis so that good calculated business decisions can be made to increase the chances of success. But the same just can't really be said for betting on roulette. And this is no different to professional poker players who work hard to develop their game so that they too can make good calculated decisions to maximise their chances of winning. But roulette is more of a gamble because there's nothing you can really do to influence the outcome. So although it's not clear cut, I'd say that if you need to depend more on luck because you can't influence the outcome, then it's more of a gamble. Otherwise, it's more like investing. Luck can overpower skill any day of the week, hands down. You know, I know that I'd certainly rather be lucky than good. Unfortunately, it's not something that can be relied upon, nor is it sustainable in the long run. Remember the popular expression, like luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. So this is essentially saying that we can all make our own good luck. Or in other words, we can harness the power of luck to our advantage. And how? By using your skill. Why do I only win small pots whenever I make a strong hand, but other players are so lucky and always seem to be able to stack their opponents? They probably just play more aggressively and build more pots in position than you do with a wider range of hands, so that this way, when they flop a strong hand, it's much easier for them to make big bets and stack their opponents. And they also probably just have a table image that they can exploit, where they're being perceived as being capable of bluffing so that when they actually have the nuts, they can still continue to get a lot of action. But why am I so unlucky to get cooled or get stacked so much more often than other players? They probably just avoid playing big pots with marginal hands, out of position versus decent players. You know, they understand the value of their cards on different board textures and are very careful to not overplay their hand. Look, there are countless of other examples like this, even in life, you know, away from the poker table. Are you single and just think you're unlucky for not being able to meet the right person, but you choose to spend most of your free time at home by yourself, instead of putting yourself out there to meet new people, broaden your networks and socialise with friends? There are usually good, valid reasons that make up the difference between lucky and unlucky people. And if you pay enough attention to find them and work hard enough, you too can also become one of those lucky people. Right, quick recap guys on luck versus skill. Decide for yourself how much control you want versus how much you want to just depend on luck to achieve all the things that you want in life. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say poker is 60% skill, 40% luck. So luck will always have a significant influence on your win rate, but skill is the dominant force in the long term. Now this is just obviously just my opinion, as I'm sure everyone will have their own view on this. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and please remember to subscribe and support my channel if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this from myself. Alright guys, enjoy the rest of your sunny afternoon, uh, work hard, good luck and I'll catch you in the next video.